Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Film Snobbery Live. I am your host, Nick Baisley. I'm joined uh, this week and every week with my co-host, Jerry Cavallaro, director of Stuck Like Chuck, the show, or movie, rather, that uh, was just released. You saw the trailer for, uh, at least mostly, right before the show. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Nick. Thank you. You're welcome, so, sir. Uh, yeah, See, you know, everyone has to go check it out. Everyone definitely needs to go check that out. It's freaking free. And if you've got a free 86 minutes, I don't see why you wouldn't go to www.stucklikechuck.com and check out your movie. And, and advertisement. Uh, <laughs> uh, I want to welcome everyone to the show today, this week. I actually, I think we have a fabulous show. We've got a, a great guest on the show t this week. We've got, um, we've got prizes to give away. We're going to have a great conversation, uh, both with our guest and our audience here. I, I see we already have a really good uh, a start to the audience. We have Zach Forsman, Nathan Cole, uh, the water holer, uh, our, our good buddy Bill over at the First Glance Film Festival. Remember, First Glance Film Festival Philly is going to be next uh, October. October. It's in October, and uh, I think October 14th. I'm sure Bill Bill correct me. Uh, but look forward in the coming shows. We've got some great guests. Uh, some of the official selections from the First Glance Film Festival, Philly, are going to come on the show, talk about their movies, kind of pump it up a bit, uh, and, and get a little bit of exposure uh, as they lead up to their festival uh, debut down in uh, Philadelphia. It's going to be awesome. Um, always a good time there. So uh, let's see who else we have here. Oh, and Michelle Simmons, obviously. Thank you for uh, stopping in as well. Um, I want to welcome our guest. You guys might know him as one of the, the co-hosts, one of the hosts of the documentary blog podcast. Uh, uh, you or might know him from his... Uh, uh, pr uh, film Clean Flicks premiered over at, I believe it premiered, I could be wrong, or it was just an official selection of uh, the Toronto International Film Festival um, a, a couple years back is now going to, is now I believe released or getting released shortly. Um, he's got a couple other things he's working on as well and has worked on. He's got a new, uh, he's venturing out of the documentary realm very shortly into the, uh, the realm of the, the fictional kind of movie uh, with Rain City. Uh, before I butcher this anymore, let's just get him on the show here. Uh, everyone, Mr. Joshua Legere. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks you. Did I, I never asked, did I pronounce your, your last name right? You know, of all the things we went over, that we probably should have been first. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Legere or Legere? Legere. Legere. Wonderful. Done, wonderfully done the second time, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's great to have you on, man. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. No, man, no problem. And, and uh, so let's 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 get right on into it. Let's first let's talk about um, you know I want to talk about the documentary blog uh, dot com uh, podcast that you that you co-host. Um, I want to know how did you get started with that? So the documentary blog uh, was started by Jay Chill of Film Junk. Um, he is also a documentary filmmaker, and uh, a lot of people know Film Junk for their podcast and and the film news site. Uh, Jay had a particular interest in documentary and there's just not a lot of content out there on the web and so he was one of the first guys to kind of get um, a blog going that was specifically about uh, documentary and nonfiction. We cover reality, we cover concert concert movies, a lot of different stuff like that. Um, and I, uh, I contacted Jay about the possibility of doing a podcast. I had been um, at Michael Moore's Traverse City Film Festival up in Michigan and we were talking up there about how there also weren't many documentary-themed podcasts. And um, I called Jay and I said, you know, if, if we did this podcast, Michael Moore and a bunch of other filmmakers would, would come on and be interested in talking with us because there just aren't that many outlets. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we started it up, and it's been really fun so far. We've talked to... Sundance winners and Academy Award nominees yeah. and it's been good. I, I was I was going through the archives and while I admit like I told you before off air I haven't listened to a ton of stuff but um, I, I did see that I mean you guys have had on Andy Timoner you've had uh, Malcolm Ingram you've had you guys have had some great great people uh, come on and talk about their uh, their projects and um, I, I guess one of the questions I have for you is where did you get your passion specifically now I mean not obviously you have a passion for film but why specifically documentaries and like reality TV stuff like that. Uh, reality TV is more of a guilty pleasure, I guess. <laughs> um, now, documentary has just been a form of film that I've loved. You know, I didn't I didn't come to documentary necessarily first. I worked on a lot of you know small independent films on crews. Um, you know, doing everything from art department to production to locations for years. You know, um, and but I was always a fan of documentary, and it just worked out that um, there was a great story to tell and. 
um, in my area, in the area that I lived in, and um, you know, I had the opportunity to go out and make a, a documentary film. It was just, it was a very easy segue into my directing career from the kind of art department stuff and other jobs on sets that I've been doing previous to that. Now, you, you mentioned, uh, uh, you know, very briefly, and, and we'll, we're going to get to that documentary uh, for, uh, in a minute, because uh, we got the trailer for it that we're going to show too, uh, Clean Flicks. But um, you mentioned, uh, you know, where you live, and, and which is out in Utah. My question is, is um, you know, what is, and I, I know I kind of led up to it when we were in the, uh, you know, off air here, but what's, what is the world in Utah like when it's not Sundance time? Um, there's not a whole lot going on. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, yeah, Sundance and the ski season are definitely the main reasons people come to Utah. Um, I moved here um, when I was in high school and then moved away for a few years, went to Europe and ended up coming back here. Um, and I, ended, you know, I grew up kind of going to the Sundance and Slamdance film festivals. That was always a part of my life growing up, but I think it um, kind of formed my love for film at an early age. And there's a huge independent film movement out here. Um, it's one of the biggest in the country, actually just a lot of really professional crews and studio, stage room and rental houses and stuff like that. And Utah, for, as some people know, was kind of the number three spot until people started going to, to Canada and New Zealand more often. Uh, Utah was a big filming location. It's probably in the top ten still. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like anytime they need Red Rocks or something, they'll come and shoot a scene for <laughs> Galaxy Quest or Star Trek or the John Carter of Mars movie that's coming out was filmed all in Utah. And, and, and uh, you know, you, you said um, before when we were talking kind of, again, off air, uh, you've, you've attended some of the Sundance Labs and stuff like that. What, what, is, what kind of goes on there? What, what's that all about? Is that, would you do it more as, a, you know, as that learning experience? Are you doing it more for networking? What's your, uh, what, you know, what, tell me the story of the Sundance Labs. The Sundance Labs is the most amazing thing on the face of the earth. They take, uh, <laughs> they take uninitiated filmmakers who have written a good script um, or have shown some promises as directors, and they take them up to, you know, Robert Redford's resort up in the hills above, the mountains, I should say, above Provo, Utah, the Sundance Resort, and they bring in professional actors for them to get a, you know, sense of how their screenplays are playing. They bring in Academy Award winning directors to give you some guidance on how your scene work go is going. And, you know, guys like Quentin Tarantino started there, Wes Anderson started there, um, you know, uh, I, when I was up there, I worked with Miranda July on her first film. Um, it's a, it's an amazing thing. So when I was up there, for instance, there was a first time screenwriter, you know, he had, he had written this screenplay, submitted it. He was chosen. They brought in Jake Gyllenhaal to come and act huh. his, act his film out for him. And they brought in Ed Harris to give him some pointers on directing and how to talk to actors. I mean, it's, it's incredible. It, it, that's, that's, it, it's always good to, to see, um, you know, people who've kind of so you know, so to speak, made it kind of come on and try to pass on some of that knowledge to to other people, and and it's really cool that you know you're the, some of the people that you're you're working with there. You can now see their careers, you know, taking off. Miranda July being one of them. It seems like her career is really starting to kind of um, you know go on the rise, and um, yeah. yourself as well. I mean, you're 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 no slouch, sir. You've got you've got a really mm -hmm. nice little uh, you know body of work going on here. You've got you know you're you're moving into a a new genre of uh, of film filmmaking yourself uh going into your new your new um your new film rain city uh which um i you know i want to i want to get to in a second but first let's uh let's let's get back to um this documentary you did clean flicks uh, based out it, it's 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 uh you know it's about uh, well tell why don't you tell everyone what it's about yeah so um you know there was something that was going on here in utah which was there were there are a lot of mormons here for people who don't know and um a lot of the uh, Mormon clientele don't watch R-rated movies. It's not like a commandment of the Mormon church, but it's kind of socially frowned upon. And so some savvy businessmen in the era decided, hey, if we take R-rated films and we cut out the sex and the violence and the swearing, we can remarket these films to Mormon audiences and, uh, and make a lot of money. And they did just that, and they got huge. Yep. And they not only were they blossoming in Utah with like 80 locations, they started spreading out across the United States and Canada. And when the internet uh, distribution came into the picture, kind of being Netflix, they started, you know, doing it all online. And it was this huge business until uh, the Directors Guild of America kind of caught wind of what they were doing 
And uh, you had guys like Martin Scorsese, Robert Redford, Steven Soderbergh, Steven Spielberg coming after these little mom and pop shops in Utah and say, hey, leave our movies alone. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess one of the questions that immediately comes to mind on something like that is, isn't that technically piracy? Because they're remaking the movies and repackaging them for a sale or rent. Um, yes, you know, they're altered, but ostensibly, it, it, isn't it piracy to some degree? Well, the judge agreed with you because this eventually went to court. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, you know, it's it's tricky. They had an argument. They were they had a one, they were doing what they called the one to one ratio, which was they were buying an original copy. Clean Flips was buying an original copy for every film that they edited. Right. So they were saying, look, Hollywood's not losing any money from this. This is just creating something for a market that wants it. And you know, um, you know, as we made the film, you know, I think, I, and I had a co-director on this film. I should say, Andrew, Andrew James. Um, as we were making the film, we, um, you know, we were kind of, we kind of came in on the side of art. We kind of came in the side of the filmmaker, but we did see that there was an argument on the other side, you know. And as we are now in the digital age, we know, you know, hey, we people like to take their content and remix it and mm -hmm. re rework it and watch it in however way they please and watch it, you know, watch it now and. And, uh, you know, that's something that I think the studios are really going to have to deal with moving forward because now that everything's digital, you know, stopping a company like Cleanflix is nearly impossible. No, yeah, I mean, at, at this point, they, they could just, um, instead of, you know, buying, well, uh, first of all, most of these are mom and pop shops that don't, probably most of them don't exist anymore in terms of, um, you know, or, or, you know, or, or probably will fail to exist as, blue, you know, DVDs, Blu-ray, stuff like that. Physical media is phased out. Exactly. Uh, you know, but at that point, you know, really, you're, you know, yes, what's stopping them from, say, torrenting, <clears throat> you know, these clean movies, which, you know, like a Mormon torrent site to me seems almost like a an opposite type of thing like it shouldn't <laughs> right. one of those things don't belong i i actually uh, a little quick uh pit tidbit about me i used to be an it i use a network guy i was a network engineer an it guy and the company i worked for was owned and operated by all mormons from utah from salt lake and um thankfully they not all they weren't of the tent like the the people who were very uh, uh strict and followed all the tenants like they swore um you know, uh, they all had, you know, except for one of them, all of them had lots of kids, um, <laughs> stuff like that, probably the special underwear, whatever, we won't get into that, but um, it was, it Older was, movie. It, but, it, but they were, they, it was funny though, when they were consume, consuming media um, or, or whatever, that is when like certain things kind of came out, like they're like, oh, I don't watch that because it's, you know, uh, it's, it, it's, it's racy or whatever, and I was like, really? I'm like, do you see half the stuff, the porn that we clean off that CEO's computer? Um, <laughs> because that's what 90%, for those of you guys who ever wanted to be, get into IT or tech, you don't need to be a techie. All you need to do is know how to get porn off of someone's computer, um, or re I should say, not get it off like that's the virus, you need to rescue the porn, like that's, you know, like you're rescuing like a woman from a burning building rescue the porn from the virus that's what I t like 90% of IT work is um, <laughs> the rest of its networking and you know rebuilding stuff and you know databases and crap like that mostly databases filled with porn but whatever um, uh, and and I, what I want to do right now is I'm going to just uh, take, we're going to take a quick break. I want to show everyone the, the trailer for Clean Flicks because I watched it before the show and um, I, I actually really liked it. So uh, I will say this is just the teaser. The, um, the film's coming out this fall and there's an actual trailer in the works. But yeah, this is... This yeah, is th th this is the trailer that was on. If you go to, um, I think it's is it Clean Flicks movie or or www. Is it Clean? F I can't remember the. I have. I should have written it yeah, down. It, no, it's fine. It's cleanflixthemovie.com. Cleanflixthemovie.com. I'm gonna write it down now while we're uh, when we go to uh, the trailer here. Uh, we'll be right Thanks. back, folks, and uh, we'll, with a little bit more of uh, Joshua um, uh, Legary, right? Very good. Yes. Very good. I'm, I'm horrible with names, people. We all know this. But we'll be right back with more uh, Joshua Legary uh, right after this. Uh, see you in a second. Forsake your sins. Don't see R-rated movies. And go no more after the lust of your eyes. For the mind through which this filth passes is never the same afterwards.
you're not going to prevent people from editing movies, whether they do it in their basement or whether they do it through Canada. <laughs> you're not going to stop people from editing movies. I bless you with the increased discernment to judge between Christ and Antichrist. And we're back, uh, and um, I, I, I really actually, uh, I, I really love the trailer. I actually really like the overall composition of everything I saw. I wish I'd actually seen the flick, um, because that looks like something that would be like right up my alley. Um, I'll get you a copy. I'll get you a copy. That would be great. I'd love to review it, even, even, um, you know, even just for the site or whatever. But you know, one of the things I also want to talk about. Let's talk about this. This um, now, did it have its premiere at Toronto in two thousand nine? Yeah, premiered at the Toronto Film Festival, and, you know, um, we were kind of talking about this off-air, but, you know, I kind of grew up in the era of the Kevin Smith and Quinn Tarantino guys get their films in Sundance and their careers explode, and, and, you know, even more specifically, like Jared Hess with Napoleon Dynamite, he's from my area. I worked on a bunch of movies with Jared um, when we were both crewing. He was working in the camera department, and I was working in the art department, so I, like, firsthand saw his career blow up after Napoleon Dynamite. And so I guess I just kind of assumed that would happen if we got our film into a major film festival. Right. But we, you know, we premiered the film at Toronto, and, uh, and it was good. It was just not exactly the best venue for the film, I think. I mean, I, I'm eternally grateful to Tom Powers, the documentary programmer, but mm -hmm. it's just not a grassroots festival. Toronto is a festival for huge movies that are going to go on to win Academy Awards, and we were kind of this little scrappy indie flick and I don't know, I just don't know if we were that audience's cup of tea. I think we would have been a lot better off at Sundance or, or even Slamdance or something like that. But you see, know, you know, I, I know you're not taking on as, as big a, or controversial a subject as, say, like a, um, you know, a, a Super Size Me or something like a Morgan Spurlock type of deal. But, I, I, yeah. I mean, just judging purely from the trailer here, I would think that, um, main, first of all, mainstream Hollywood would love you just purely because of the topic of the, of the you know, in the, in the kind of, overall um, aesthetic of what you're trying to accomplish with, with clean flicks. Um, I would think that you would get that kind of mainstream attention just from that. And then, yes, also kind of that art. I could see what you're saying about, um, you know, Toronto's not grassroots, so it's not a, um, you know, you don't, you're not going to get that artsy crowd. But I would think that you would get kind of a, a combination of both with what you have in terms of subject, subject matter. I mean, what was, when you yeah. were there, I mean, how did it play to the audience? Did, were, you know, and, and actually, I'm kind of curious to even know um, how packed was the the theater for your particular screening because i think a lot of people think toronto and they think that every screening is standing room only basically yeah i mean we had we had good turnouts i think people were excited to see the film um you know and just as a film fan and as a total film geek which i am to see like elvis costello walking into your theater or or Danny Boyle walking, you know, up to, to see your screening, you you start to think you're going to pass out or whatever, you know. And, <laughs> and um, it was pretty amazing, you know. Um, you know, that's where I met Malcolm Ingram. He's kind of a friend now. He's been on our podcast a couple of times. He came out to see the film. Um, hey, he, he's someone that I've been trying to get him on this show for a while, and he's actually, we have talked on Facebook a lot, and I have his email address, um, and we've we've gone back and forth a couple of times, but it's just it's not one of those things that just hasn't been able to happen because I wanted to talk to him about Bear Nation, and then I know he's got you know the the new uh, flick coming out oh, no, about the, yeah. the bathhouses well, and stuff. He's in he's in Australia or he's traveling filming that movie right now, so that yeah. may be a reason he's hard to get a hold of. I will put in a word for you. I don't think it will matter, but I will definitely put a word. <laughs> <in there. laughs> no, hey, you know I I appreciate. It. I just I I like his. His person. I actually do listen to his podcast as well, Blowhard. Um, so there you go, Malcolm. Is a is a nice is a you know my way of extending the olive branch. Uh, blow. Everyone should listen to Blowhard on the Smodcast uh, Internet Radio Network. Uh, you know, go to www.smodcast.com and you can listen to all the other shows they got there. See, Kevin, you owe me now. I don't know how that works, but um, <laughs> back to the to our show that no one listens yeah. to. Uh, no, but it was an amazing. I mean, it was it was a great time, and you know, we've been really well received at a lot of film. I mean, it's a definitely a film festival audience kind of movie. People that go to film festivals love a movie you know yep. like clean flicks but at the same time you know like we didn't get the support of mainstream Hollywood and the reason why is this is an issue that they don't want to tackle and they were kind of a little bit annoyed I think that we were bringing it more into the public sphere because just like I said before with you know the digital age this is something that anybody can do so if you get a huge 
group of people like you know evangelical Christians saying, you know what, we don't want swearing in our movies either. We don't want nudity in our movies either. You know, um, I think they're afraid of losing control of this right now. They want they won the initial court case. Right. Our film's not really about that. It's about the people who stayed in business after the court case. So we're, so that was interesting because. You know, they're saying they op they were operating, you know, this moral business, but they were knowingly breaking the law doing huh. it. Um, now, and we do actually have a question from the audience about this. Uh, Zach Forsman yeah. actually asks, um, were the stores doing this, just a small niche of stores, or is this the majority of stores th throughout Utah? Uh, it, was a, it was like a brand. So, I mean, it was like a, um, you know, like a blockbuster video, but all of them were edited movies. So they had a lot of locations. It wasn't every video store in Utah, but um, although I would say Blockbuster considered really getting into the business based on the success that Cleanflix was having, hmm. um, you know, but Cleanflix was going huge internationally. The, fun the funny thing about that, though, is Blockbuster kind of technically already does that, you know, with their, their family-friendly, quote-unquote, stance and, and only carrying yeah. a certain type of movie. Like, I had a conversation with Lloyd Kaufman a couple years ago about how he's had to fight forever to get trauma films into um, into Blockbusters and how they've... they've fought tooth and nail to keep them out um, purely right. because of like you know excessive uh, gore or, or sex or stuff like that um, I, I, I do think that that kind of um, moral stance in any type of company is always part of the downfall of that company um, right. I don't know it's weird but no, I'm sorry I interrupt I totally interrupted you on that no I was just saying they were they were doing really well outside of Utah in the end you know they they started you know, going after Mormon clientele, but they realized, like I was saying, you know, there's this huge evangelical Christian movement in the United States. They were selling movies to schools. They were selling movies to prisons. You know, and they were they were doing really well. And they were a couple of them told me they were moving toward doing like a red box kind of thing. Huh. They actually they actually have some up in Idaho, like edited movie little kiosks at the grocery store and post office and stuff. Like that. Andrew, yeah, we actually had a comment from um, Bill Ostroff, uh, First Glance Film, in the chat room too. Said they've been doing this for years on airpla airplanes as well, which, you know, yeah. they usually don't, uh, you know, they're not going to they're not gonna play like Basic Instinct or something like that on an airplane anyway, <laughs> you know what I mean? But, um, but that, was, that was another one of the reasons that Hollywood wasn't totally, ex Hollywood I'm saying in quotes, but, you know, right. Hollywood wasn't totally excited about our films that, you know, they do allow this for television, they do allow this for the airlines, but they don't allow it for consumers at home, which is this really weird thing, you know, they've already compromised the artistic integrity in a way, right. why not allow the end user to decide what it is that they, they want to watch? And I think, you know, one of the guys at the Hollywood Reporter told us when we were doing the film, he really thinks it's all about control, giving up, you know, people aren't going to go and see it opening weekend if they know they can watch the edited version, you know, a couple weeks later or whatever, so. And, uh, you know, um, do you feel that, you know, as you've, uh, you know, as you mentioned, moving into the digital age, do you think that um, maybe not even just for the, this, you know, Mormon sector out in Utah and, and people that are doing this, you know, uh, for, claim, you know, claiming, you know, it's immoral or family friendly or however you want to say it, do you think that, you know, in the, as we move uh, more into the digital age that we'll get to a point where we will be able to basically, I don't know, for lack of a better term, self-edit our own, our own media as it, as it enters us. I mean, as of now, I mean, you look at even just something like a social site like Twitter, okay? So a social yeah, site yeah. like Twitter allows us to block and unfollow people based upon, you know, r rudeness or idiotness or whatever. Um, do you think that we'll get to a point with our media where, uh, like we can, you know, like a DVR, we can get rid of commercials, basically, or fast forward through commercials that we'll be able to now edit out? Yeah, there's there's you know. a company. This is in the film actually. There's a company called Clearplay. They sell, and this they got around the court ruling by selling a DVD player that has pre-programmed into the hardware, uh, you know, the ability to skip over swear words, sex scenes, et cetera, et cetera. So you put a little dry, jump drive in. And it, you know, for each film, and it tells you where it's going to skip. And it's essentially just a fast forward button or a mute button for your TV, except for it automates that. So you can put in the original DVD. You don't have to have an edited DVD. You can put in, you know, whatever. Uh, I can't think of a good example, of course. But let's say the brown bunny. And you can <laughs> skip over the end scene. It will just do it automatically. You'll never know that that scene existed in the film. And so if you, you know, if you, as we move towards more internet-connected devices, rather than having any type of jump drive or external device that's connected with something like this, um, 
ostensibly, you know, being able to take, uh, you know what, if they were smart, you know who would, uh, who, who they should, who a company like that would partner up with, and it would be completely, again, one of those kind of opposites attract type of situations, Mr. Skin. Yes. <laughs> what they should do is they should told because they have all the time. This is how many minutes and seconds into a movie you're going to see this tit. Um, what they should do is they should partner up with like a Mr. Skid and say, you know, you give us access to your, you know, chronological uh, library of of nudity and sex and swears and stuff, and we will, um, you know, we will use that as the basis for our database for how we we will skip over stuff like that. It's it's really like a, a sleeping with the enemy type of type of yeah. uh, relationship and I think but that's funny I think that 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 could work um, you need to get on that Nick that's yours that's mine no oh, please I've got plenty of other things that uh, will never I have plenty <laughs> of other ideas that will never take off I'll give him this one <laughs> but uh, but I want you know let's we, let's talk about um, your 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 newest endeavor that you're you're working on right now you're, you're kind of getting away you, you've done some reality stuff you've done uh, documentary stuff you now you're you're, you're more, working your way into uh, fictional narratives uh, with Rain City, which is, uh, yeah. it, that, that's what's, uh, what's coming up next, right? Yeah, well, I mean, what I will say is I'm, I'm always going to continue to do documentary, but when I got into film, it wasn't just to do documentary. You know, I was working in fictional features for five years, um, and I always wanted to do that, too. So I'm going to continue doing both. Um, we've got a reality show that's going to be on National Geographic Channel this fall called Nights of Mayhem. Everybody can check out. Um, but I'm also going to be shooting my first fictional feature, and you know, it's it's a milestone for me. I'm excited to do it. What I realized, I mean, this is back to the lesson learned at Toronto, is just because I have a movie at a big film festival doesn't mean I get to go just have any career I want. I still have, you know, I still have to. I'm kind of pigeonholed in documentary in a way. So even though I want to do it to break out of that, now I have to go make my first fictional film and and break in that door as well. So so that's what we're going to go do. We're going to go shoot a little no budget film up in Seattle. Um, it's kind of a film noir genre film, but it's going to have a naturalistic overtone, you know, kind of in the, I don't want to say mumblecore, but I just did. Um, but, you know, it's going to kind of have that naturalistic feel, but with the genre element injected into it. Okay. And, and did you write this as well? Well, yeah. And um, it's, uh, we wrote an outline and we wrote a lot of, a lot of uh, the necessary plot point dialogue, but it's going to be largely improvisational so uh kind of yeah. like uh um uh, uh, uh like hump, like there's a movie hump day or baghead yep. uh cyrus these are movies that are kind of in the same wheelhouse as what we're doing but what i'd like to do is take you know what tarantino and those guys did and robert rodriguez did and you know they took talky films like slacker in the 90s and they put action and and uh and crime genre into it we're going to do that i guess with the talky films of our day we want to throw some heavy genre into the into the mix and and i i definitely think that that has worked for for people like tarantino and stuff like that when you know you kind of purposely in an almost like an homage type of way putting you know injecting genre into your movie very in a very obvious manner um right, right. i i kind of like that i kind of like that because it's kind of that that almost gives you a throwback type of feeling and stuff and i don't know i've, I've really not seen a lot in, you know with the exception of what you just said but um, uh, improvisational, I mean, impro improvisational movies that yeah. are um, genre movies. You know what I mean? It's kind, I, of, it's kind of suited to our skill set too, because we're used to following the action, and, and you know, and kind of get, you know, we're shooting it in a very observational, documentary kind of way, not mockumentary, not like Christopher Guest or The Office or something where people are talking to the camera, but just in a kind of a, more like a photojournalist would approach a subject. You know, we're really going to shoot it in an observational documentary style, so. It kind of will work with what we're doing. And is this what you're uh, you're going to be setting up a Kickstarter campaign for in the near future? Yeah, you know, um, if I had been smart, I would have started it up before we did this podcast. And <laughs> some friends headed over that direction, but I think it's going to be up on like Monday or something. That's um, people when when we put up the uh, when we put up the archive of the show in the next day or so, we'll have up uh, in time for that. So we'll make sure we uh, we get it. So we're gonna we're gonna have people looking out for Rain City. Yeah, and you can uh, also go to Facebook. Um, Facebook.com slash Rain City Movie. We haven't really promoted that at all. I think there's like five friends on it right now, but, um, you know, we'll get that going too as soon as we get the Kickstarter campaign. And that's, that would be a good place to go now if you want to get information about the movie. And what, um, I, I, I ask a lot of people this question, um, who are doing, who's doing, crowd, well, eh, excuse me, I ask a lot of people this question when they're doing crowdfunding, um, only because, not because one of the two people or the two main players is one of our partners, but 
because I'm always curious as to the mindset of the decision. Um, why did you try like a Kickstarter versus like an Indiegogo or any other of the uh, several choices that are out there for crowdfunding? Um, you know, I, Indiegogo is great. I just I had heard I heard about Kickstarter first. That was kind of my introduction into crowdfunding, um, and I didn't want to do both. So uh, yeah, I just guess I'm more familiar with Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, I have no problem with Indiegogo. I would tell, I've contributed to Indiegogo campaigns. I think they're great, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, we went with Kickstarter, and, and crowdfunding was a choice literally based off of kind of what I was saying before. I can get a documentary project set up now. I mean, I've been somewhat successful in my career to that point, but really it doesn't get you very far if you want to do something different. You have to go out just as same as the first time and make your own way for it. So. So I guess uh, we spent all of our money on the first documentary. Uh, we went in to do some reality work to kind of get some bankroll coming in, and, uh, and now we're now we're going to try to crowdfund this first fictional film. And Hopefully you, that'll work out for us. Do you know how much? Um, I, I, you know, do you know how much you're going to try to raise? Yeah, and, um, we're going to go fifteen thousand dollars on it. Um, you know, I chose shoot in Seattle because I knew um, we had resources there. That mm -hmm. was kind of the main reason I. I did the old Robert Rodriguez maneuver of writing the script around, you know, locations and cars and people that we knew that we could get for free. So, uh, yeah, we're going the $15,000 route on it. We're shooting it on a DSLR, you know, 5D full frame camera. And, you know, that's also kind of new for us. We've been shooting on the Red and the, and the Epic and with nonfiction, but you know, we just don't have money to do it. So we're gonna we're gonna go that route and see how it works out for us. Well and the good news is, is that, you know, you you have the ability with, you know, DSLRs and you know which are coming down in price as well, not that they're not already yeah. fairly fairly well priced. Um, you know, and, and like you said, if you, you keep in mind the budget as you're writing and stuff like that, you have a real ability to, to keep this stuff kind of lean. And I always, I always love it when I see people who are like, I'm going to go make a movie, a feature, or short, or whatever it is, for like, you know, five grand, ten grand, fifteen grand, you know, it, and you wouldn't seeing what the outcome is and, and lately, I'd say over the maybe the past six months to a year specifically, the uh, quality of the work that I'm seeing um, visually has gotten a lot better. Uh, that's not to say that 99% of the stuff that crosses my plate still isn't shit, but, um, <laughs> and, and I hate to say that, but oh yeah. my God, some people need to step up their game. Because um, at yeah, this oh, point, absolutely. there's, you know, with what is available out there, there really is almost no excuse at this point. I mean, at this point, it's, the onus is so much on the filmmaker now. Um, to, to, to get that part right. And, and um, again, I'd like to say that I'm seeing a lot of people stepping it up, and I'm, I'm excited as a film critic to see that, because it's really easy for someone like myself to get jaded after watching 99 shitty movies to get to the one gem. Um, oh, yeah. And it's tough saying the word shitty movie to an independent filmmaker, too, because, you know, every movie has its own circumstances, every movie has its own, uh, but, you know, restrictions and stuff like that going against it, but... Um, God, man, it's just, it's so tough sometimes when you're just like, if the guy just moved the camera for like a second, this movie would be so much better. Or like if he, if his characters weren't horrible, you know, or horribly written or, or poorly acted or whatever you want to say. Or in Jerry's case, if your movie just had some lighting at all. No kidding. Uh, that's, that's the inside joke with me and yeah. On the flip side, you can you see now that these cameras are becoming more accessible. You see these films that look beautiful. Mm -hmm. Well, or they're shot well, but they're not necessarily. There's no content there. You know, there's not. Yes. That's what it's... we learned from the Kevin Smith era is that with good writing, you can have horrible acting and a horrible camera, and it can still be good. So, no, a absolutely. And... No, absolutely, and and. Um... And you can have bad lighting now because with a full frame DSLR, you can let enough light in to make it look good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> then you just open up that aperture a little bit. Um, but uh, let's see. Oh, and it's. Uh, let's, uh, I was just kind of checking around the the, uh, the the chat room and stuff to see if we had any more questions or anything like that. Um, I want to just remind everyone. Um, oh, I just lost my pen. Um, I want to remind everyone uh, in the audience, you can actually uh, see more of Josh on Twitter. Uh, you can go to twitter.com slash, it, it's Icarus Arts, right? Yeah, I-C-A-R-U-S Arts. That's my, the name of my production company is Icarus Arts and Entertainment. It, yep, and uh, so you can find him there. Again, you can find uh, Rain City Movie 
uh, more information on Rain City, uh, facebook.com slash Rain City Movie. Look for it, please, on uh, on Kickstarter, um, you know, because he's trying to raise, you know, 15K. So start, uh, you could be like Kelly Bundy, start start cutting out those Ks. See, real obscure, old, old uh, Married with Children uh, reference. Um. <laughs> We're, uh, you know, it's going to be crazy, man. We're going to be sleep. I'm going to, I'm, I'm dedicated to sleeping in a tent during Rain City so that, you know, our actors and DP can have a nice warm hotel room to sleep in. You know, we're nice. putting all, every penny on screen, you know. I'm, I, and I'm excited for that. I like, I like seeing it. Well, one of the things I, and I'll say this right now because I've said it off air to a lot of, well, mostly to Jerry, but to some other people as well. And I actually, I just wrote an article um, for another website about it. Um, I kind of touched upon it. I don't know when it'll see the light of day, but um, it, it's just it's it's really nice to have someone on the show that you know is exhibiting some passion for what they do and and is uh, engaging and interesting to talk to about what you know they've got going on. And um, I, I want to thank you for coming on and, and talking about it. And I want to congratulate you too because uh, uh, Clean Flicks has a distribution, right? Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be distributed by United Films in the United States um, this fall, and then you know there's a lot of uh, if you're in the UK or whatever, there's we've got UK distribution and. And a lot of other English-speaking countries at this point. There's not a lot of English-speaking countries. <laughs> I was going to say you just covered the big two. You know, we got. We got all, we, let's just say we've got all the English-speaking countries. <laughs> so you got South America, Australia, New Zealand. Um, don't forget Canada, my friend. That's. Uh, I don't forget Canada. Believe me, they. Uh, although I do still blame them for Alan Thick and and Brian <laughs> Adams, but uh, we'll let that go. We'll let them watch your movie. Um, <laughs> but uh, now I want to thank you for coming on. Um, I want everyone to make sure they they go check out the documentaryblog.com, uh, listen to the documentary blog podcast that uh, our good friend Joshua here does co-host. Um, they've got uh, some really good guests, guests that blow mine out of the water. Uh, Joshua being the exception there, um, ah. because uh, obviously they, they they know how to get the good guests. I I don't. I just I'm just like anyone anyone, Bueller. Um, <laughs> but uh, I see that Waterholer just added Clean Flicks to their Netflix. Saved it to Netflix. Thank you very much, Waterholer. Nice. Oh, and we did have. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, oh, uh, we did. Have, we have one more question here in the audience. It's from uh, Rachel. Tal I don't know how to say her last name. It's Rachel Talay, maybe, or Telly. I don't know. Um, can Josh talk more about the basic storyline of Rain City? Oh uh, yeah, um, it's it's set against the backdrop of eco terrorist movement that's going on in the Pacific Northwest. I don't know how familiar your audience is with that, but basically there were these guys who were, you know, committing arson, setting fire to. They were environmentalists setting fire to uh, lumber yards and meatpacking plants. And uh, unfortunately for them, they were doing it right around the time of 9/11. So they were immediately labeled eco terrorists. And although what they were doing, you know is probably arguably wrong and illegal uh you know they were they went to they were tried as terrorists which i think is a little extreme compared to you know the arsons that they were committing so um so it's kind of set in that backdrop it's a film noir about <coughs> excuse it's me <laughs> sorry sneeze <clears throat> that's fine so uh, it's this, a woman's, this woman's sister's murdered and so it's kind of a gender role reversal with the film noir thing our main character is the female she's the detective there's kind of the male version of the femme fatale that she encounters and it's her trying to find out what happened to her sister that's dead and it's kind of set against that eco-terrorism backdrop and we're going to astoria so we're going to see the goonies rock so that, that oh makes it all, wow. that is awesome and, and do me a favor take you got to take some pictures of that i, I will send them to you because we we like we like uh goonies references here because jerry's always telling me how much he thinks i remind him of sloth oh so, for, me of, uh, Mikey. <laughs> well, I, I, it's okay. I, I get Jerry back because we call him the Aquaman of indie film. Ooh. So, <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> so Sloth That's Love Chunk, <laughs> Sloth Love Chunk, and Ch Sloth Love Baby Ruth. But uh, Jerry, <laughs> you are useless. No kidding. Please <laughs> respect me. You're you're in the club. But Thanks, you don't Johnny. do it. Be so sure. <laughs> but uh, Josh, I, I wanna I wanna thank you again for coming on and talking about uh, all the stuff you've got going on, and um, you know so you're much. you are such a busy dude, and um, I'm I'm really happy to to see that everything's taken off for you. you. You're getting the the you know the freedom to explore new things in your career um, outside of documentaries, and 
Um, obviously, you know, you're, you've dabbled in kind of a little bit of everything. You've got to live kind of, I think, oh, there's a bug. All right. Uh, you've gotten to live a little bit of kind of the filmmaker's dream. You, you've had the big premiere. You've, you've done the Sundance yeah. Lab stuff. You're in a, you're in a position. The horrible reviews from Variety. <laughs> you know what, though? How many freaking, uh, how many, how many people get even in Variety? You know what I mean? You know so, what I want to tell you, Nick? What's as, that? As a fellow podcaster, I just want to say, you're doing a fantastic job. For everybody that's in the chat room, you guys should know that, what Nick does is nearly impossible. I think it's pretty incredible that you're able to do this live with a camera on you um, each and every week. It's pretty amazing. Oh, thank you, man. No, I, I, I appreciate that. And believe me, there are many, many times where I wish there was not a camera on me. But unfortunately, it's kind of the... <laughs> And this is not a fake. I used to have like co-hosts in studio. Like I used to be easy to be like, here, focus on this other person who looks much better than me. But unfortunately, uh, we've whittled it down to me, and uh, so that's who you're stuck with. But uh, uh, Josh, you're you, you're um, Joshua, you're you're invited on the show anytime. You know, feel free to take Jerry's place anytime you want to, and um, you know, awesome. you, you can add another uh, podcast to your to your uh, your resume. So you're out of here, Jerry. You're out. <laughs> I've been looking for a reason to leave, so... <laughs> well, because he's got such a fantastic career going with this whole Stuck Like Chuck thing, so uh, he doesn't need me anymore. Um, <laughs> I have fantastic business sense. I released the film for free. <laughs> <laughs> loving it, man. Loving it. And, um, you know, and, and uh, I will say uh, good luck with the, you know, the release of Clean Flicks this fall, and, and I'm looking forward to, to seeing... Um, I, I want to see it on a shelf somewhere, preferably not edited. Thank you, sir. I'm Thank you. To write through your door. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, I, I, uh, I, I, that's all I got for you th th this week, but uh, uh, Mr. Joshua. But we'll, um, we'll, uh, we'll chat soon off off air, and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll uh, catch up. And and I, I'm, I'm interested in more of what you're up to. Excellent, sir. Thank you. All right, thank you, everyone. That was Joshua Legary, uh, uh, director of Clean Flicks, co-director, co-director, I think, uh, of Clean Flicks, and and uh, director of the upcoming uh, Rain City. Look for it on Kickstarter. Uh, come on, fifteen grand, he can do that. Come on, if Gary King and all these other guys can do like twenty, thirty, forty, fifty grand, we can. Uh, Zach, Zach is kicking ass. He's over eighty percent of his goal. He's still got like fourteen more days. Uh, so he's uh, he's obviously going to be set. That's awesome. I'm really excited for Zach in the in the chat room here. Uh, Jerry, um, how you doing? I'm doing good, Nick. Is oh. that your same? Is Oh, yeah. that, yeah, that's, that was the guess. That's our guess exiting. <laughs> but uh, I'm segueing over to you because we have a contest this week. Yes, and now let me just go find where I have the contest. Yes. Cause, so it, it, if, you guys, uh, if you guys in the chat room, here's, here's one of the things. While you get the contest ready, Jerry, I want to, uh, I want to just kind of uh, give some information over to the, uh, the audience here. Um, this is going to be the start of a long line of contests. Over the next eight weeks, we're going to have various guests on, um, you know, from the First Glance Film Festival Philadelphia official selections. Uh, we're going to have some other people on as well. Um, we are going to be holding the contest every week, um, as we've been doing recently. But here, here's the deal. Uh, from now till the festival, uh, you're, you're in it to win it. Because at the, uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to give away a... Um, a uh, movie maker subscription every week leading up. Uh, at the end, though, we're going to have a uh, big prize, uh, at least a copy of uh, Gorilla Pro software. Ooh, Ooh I'm, I'm really excited about that. I may kick in something on my end as well. We'll probably kick in a movie maker subscription just to, you know, why, why break tradition? Um, and uh, we'll see what else we can do um, for you guys. But... Uh, Here's the deal. If you win uh, uh, over the course of the next eight weeks, that's what makes you eligible to win the big prize. But here's the thing. Um, you have to keep watching because the, the last uh, show uh, that we do in this series is going to have a trivia contest. And the trivia question will be something that has happened over the course of the past eight weeks. So in order to actually win the big prize, you have to watch the show. So... That's there's that. What do you think about them apples, Jerry? It sucks for the audience, right? That they have to actually watch the show. I know. That, that's that's what you get. Like you have to sit through our show, but you might win something cool. Exactly. So I found the contest. If you, uh, I would love to hear your contest, Jerry. I I tried to fit everything into it. I think I did. It's a, not as coherent as our usual ones, but uh, I'm gonna put a message in the chat room. First person to tweet it out. Uh, wins, and 
Nick, why don't you go ahead and read that one? I'm going to uh, read it right here. It says, watching at Film Snobbery Live with at Icarus Arts. Then, <laughs> the link for Stuck Like Chuck. Uh, at First Glance Film should send me Movie Maker Mag for more immersion. More, m- for movie immersion. There we go. Okay, so basically, re, uh, the first person to, to tweet that, is that what we're doing? The first person to tweet that out yes. is the winner. Um, it, at this point, you, obviously, if you've already won a uh, year subscription to Movie Maker Magazine, then it's kind of tough to give you another year on top of that. But uh, we're looking for new players here. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll go from there. And uh, But what we're going to do before we announce who the winner is, we're, gonna, we're going to, I would say, pay some bills. But uh, uh, some people owe us money. And uh, but we're gonna we're gonna play their ad anyway. Uh, Bill, you and I should talk uh, at some point in the next uh, near future, because um, one of, you you got to talk to one of our mutual friends and, and make them pay me. Uh, I, inside way inside joke kind of ish. Uh, it's not I will. A joke. It's not a joke. I want my motherfucking money. No kidding. <laughs> uh, I will. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna uh, show an ad from one of our sponsors though, and we'll be right back. <laughs> And we're back, and uh, before we get to our Indiegogo Project of the Week, let's go ahead and uh, let's have Jerry announce who the winner is for this week. Uh, big congratulations to Zach Forsman. Zach Forsman! Yay! See, not only did he get my $10 for uh, contributing to his movie Down and Dangerous, which is now uh, raising some funds up on Kickstarter, but he's now also getting a uh, year subscription to Movie Maker Magazine, courtesy of uh, Bill Ostroff and the First Glance Film Festivals. Uh, go ahead and check them out over in Philly and uh, in October, and then again over in Hollywood. Uh, their call for entries for that is open right now, actually, for Hollywood. So, And I've been to both, and i got to tell you, Good stuff both ways. People can say anything about uh, film festivals all they want. I will say, in terms of the first glance film festivals, one thing that, that that Bill has got down really well is, God damn it, if he doesn't pick some good good selections of movies. Um, you know, you can say anything about the size of the locations, any of that kind of stuff. Uh, not that they're bad. Um, I'm just saying in general, like compared to larger festivals that have multiple venues and all this overhead and all this other kind of stuff, which you know is not necessarily the way to go in my opinion either. But um, the one thing that he has above most of the festivals I go to is just a really solid lineup of films, and I'm always happy to, to plug that. Um, I want to go ahead now. I want to talk about our Indiegogo project of the week. It's clowning around. Um, I actually, uh, and you guys are going to forgive me, I'm going to be way disorganized on this particular one. Um, I picked it because the gentleman who uh, I know actually is is uh, doing this is on Twitter. He's been really trying to plug it. He's been doing some kind of clever stuff like, Talking uh, like like I, I've seen him talking about like the Joker and other cl- like Bo- uh, Bozo the Clown and all these other kind of stuff, kind of trying to um, tie in his fundraising campaign with. Um, oh God, I got mosquitoes in here and bugs and stuff. And, I, and anyone who knows me, I don't like bugs. Um, trying to tie together uh, his movie with. Um, you know, other things that, you know, conversations and stuff like that, engaging in people who might not be aware of what he's doing. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of into that. I'm just going to quickly uh, look up his uh, flick on Indiegogo now just to get a little bit more information. Um, let's see, clowning, clowning around. Okay. Um, it's called Clowning Around. They're trying, here we go, really easy to find. Um, it's uh, Damien Cullen is the director, 
and they're trying to raise $7,500, and they're actually a lot of the way there. They've got eight days left, though. Now, the good thing with Indiegogo is that even if they don't make their goal, they're going to walk away with some cash, so that's always good. Uh, but they're at a little under $5,000, so uh, they're $4,843, really kind of odd number to be at, but they do actually have donations starting at $1. Um, and... Uh, and it goes all the way, to, let's see, donations uh, for the perks and stuff like that go all the way to uh, $800. So, you know, that's not bad. Um, you know, they and they, they kind of have, like, even a breakdown of, like, you know, this is how much they are going to allocate for food. This is how much they're going to allocate for camera, uh, lighting, all this other kind of, even insurance. They're including insurance, something that so many filmmakers don't do. Um, you know, they got stunt coordinators, other travel expenses, um, even even for hard drives. Uh, this is a, a, um, another thing, too, interesting. It's, um, he, well, I don't know if it's interesting. I don't know how interesting it is. International filmmaker. He's in uh, the United Kingdom. He's a British, uh, British guy, London person, Pip Pip and whatnot. Um, I actually kind of dug uh, their... their uh, what they're doing in terms of in, in the professionalism kind of even what they're doing in their their pitch video I'm going to show that to you right now I figure you guys will get a I don't want to say a kick out of it but I figure that you guys will um, appreciate what they're bringing to the table here so uh, we'll be right back with uh, I actually want to talk with Jerry a little bit about Stuck Like Chuck and, and his uh, decision to release free and um, just kind of see where he's at and, and whatnot but first we're going to show you the the pitch video for clowning around see if we can't get you guys as interested as I was we'll be right back my name is Damien Cullen and I'm a UK filmmaker who is making my next short film clowning around which is about one man or rather one clown struggle um, to get his life back on track and take on his local rival we're here today at Talbridge Studios to create some stills that will um, serve as publicity for our Indiegogo campaign and the rest of the film using our experienced cast of uh, our two main clowns, Bill Thomas and Matthew Dewar, as well as our supporting cast, Kiki Kendrick and Alex Walker. We have a very experienced crew who all work in television, film and theatre. Um, they're not only experienced, but they're an international crew. We have crew from Brazil, Greece, Spain, Italy, uh, Portugal and the USA. Um, and because of that, our aim for the film and our festival strategy is to uh, send the film as far and wide as we can. So we're actually aiming to get the film shown on each of the seven continents. As for me, I've been making short films solidly for about six years now. Um, I've directed two and I've also produced eight others, all of which have been a very high quality and shot on red 35mm on HD cam and been screened in Europe, Asia and the Americas. The reason we're trying to get the film funded via Indiegogo is A, we want to make as big a noise about this film as possible and show the quality of the film and all the hard work that everyone's putting into it through the online community. And B, I love talking about films as a filmmaker and the process I'm going through, um, all the things I come up against and every step of the process of making a film. As well as the Indiegogo page, we're going to have a Twitter campaign, we're going to have a Facebook page, um, we're going to have a website that will be a base for all the traffic about the film, and also we're going to have an online forum on the website in which backers can not only interact with us, but can interact with each other about the ideas around the film and the process. If you're looking through the Indiegogo campaign or anything we're doing and there's something we're not providing or you want to see a part of a different part of the process, then let us know and we'll do our best to put that up for you. The aim is obviously to create a highly entertaining, visual and very engaging film with a real human story at the centre of it. But what I'd love most um, to happen with this project is the idea is to sit in a cinema or online with people and all kind of sit back and watch what we've created. Um, that's why my production company is called what it is, it's called Something From Nothing, because that idea of you have an idea in someone's head and then you write it and you rewrite it and you um, develop it and collaborate and after so many months of hard work eventually you have a living, breathing film that everyone takes a great, uh, a lot of pride in. So that's kind of why I really want to go down the Indiegogo route and that's my ultimate dream for this project and I really hope you'll join us, I hope you'll join us on Clowning Around and help us make Something From Nothing.
right, guys. Uh, Indiegogo.com slash clowning around film and uh, throw them some dough. Uh, now we're back. Um, I want to go talk to uh, my co-host, Jerry Cavallero. Hi, sir. Hi. How you doing? Good. I'm scared. You want to talk to me? I, I always want to talk to you. I just might not always be in the mood to talk to you. <laughs> and never on air. <laughs> <laughs> That's up, too. Um, I want to welcome, uh, uh, it looks like Gary King just joined the chat room. Happy to see him here amongst everyone else. It looks like the gang's all here now, as he says. Um, I want to go ahead and, uh, Jerry, let's talk a little bit about you just released Stuck Like Chuck um, uh, a couple <laughs> days ago for free <laughs> over at StuckLikeChuck.com. Um... I want to talk to you about your experience with that so far because uh, it was a little controversial. Some people were arguing on, uh, well, I don't remember if it was Twitter or whatever the, the forum was, but um, some people were arguing with you that that was like a stupid decision. Do you regret that at all so far? What? Give me the thought process. Get, come on, let's talk about, you're always begging me to fucking inject Stuck Like Chuck in this fucking show. Now you actually have a, a, a platform to stand on. Let's talk about Stuck Like Chuck. You're not letting me talk. You just keep rambling on with the question. Uh, first of all, screw you for the Aquaman picture, although it's very funny. <laughs> it is, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, some people, as soon as I made the announcement that I was releasing Stuck Like Chuck for free uh, with that teaser trailer that you played at the beginning of the show, uh, I started getting tweets saying, I don't think you thought this through. Uh, maybe, you, you know, when you ha when you release something for free, you need to have a plan on how to make money from it. You can't just put something out there for free. And, uh... Like, even Sherry Candler was tweeting to me saying that, you know, she I, she was like, I hope you thought everything out, and I, I was just kind of like, yeah, I, I've been wanting to do this for a while, I have, I had this plan for kind of like a tiered video service where you, the film is released for free, but uh, since we're not going to have DVDs and uh, Blu-rays, uh, I have all these hours of bonus features. I have close to ten hours of bonus features that I wanna. I've been wanting to put out there. Now, now that I will say, this puts you in a in a brand new club, kind of, because you have hours of special features. And yeah. I, I don't. I know that you've you've probably seen this online because you're like me. You kind of troll around all the time. But did you saw that the the new HD the Blu-rays for uh, for Star Wars are coming out, and they're releasing forty hours of bonus features. Yeah, and, and, and uh, the Matrix. I think the Matrix trilogy. They have like. I think they they're at close to forty hours. Yeah. By the ultimate edition, if you buy like the regular edition, it's only like a few hours. But yeah, there there's like Chris Blu-ray, you can fit so much stuff on a disc, so you can just have hours and hours of fe uh, bonus features. Plus, if you have a, a Blu-ray player connected to a computer, you can always like get access to new uh, streaming bonus features too. Not a lot of companies do that, but it is a possibility with Blu-ray. Yep. So that, that's really cool, but so that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to create a site where, like, a website that I would send to anyone that makes a donation. So basically, if anyone donates, uh, you can make a donation of a dollar or more at stucklikechuck.com. Uh, it's right. There's a link right underneath the video. There's a donate page. There's a PayPal uh, button on every page of the site. So there's a lot of places where you can donate just at the website. And if you uh, make a donation of a dollar or more, you get uh, you're going to be sent a thank you note from me, and in the thank you is going to contain the link to the website and the password, and you get access to over ten hours of bonus features, including uh, like deleted scenes. There's a commentary that we recorded yep. three weeks ago. Uh, so it's a brand new commentary. And, and not only that, it's a commentary we recorded together in, in the, the same, same room. room. We actually yeah. sat down in front of the computer, sat down for 86 minutes, and a little bit of change of the, you know, credits. And yeah, uh, <laughs> and we we, uh, we went through and, and we redid a whole new commentary. So it's not the same one that's on the DVDs that you guys uh, may or may not have, the boot, official bootleg editions. This is a brand new commentary. So if you... You've uh, you 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 know if you have those DVDs, uh, you might as well throw them away because this is all brand new. No, don't throw those away. <laughs> they're going to be super collectible. They're signed and numbered, and they're very rare because not a lot of people contribute. <laughs> 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 so, but yeah, so that's going to be worth lots of money one day. So no, no, let's 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 be honest. Uh, people, it's not the people that didn't contribute. It's just that a lot of people actually didn't give you their addresses and information to send them their movie. <laughs> Well, there are a few people that I do owe DVDs to, but they haven't responded to emails asking them where I can send it to. So, uh, yeah, if, if, if you contributed $20 or $30 or more uh, to Stuck Like Chuck 2 and you're watching this right now, uh, get in touch with me. 
There you go. But um, yeah, basically, we're not we're not doing any DVDs now. We're not gonna we're not gonna sell DVDs. We're not gonna sell Blu-rays. So this website is where you can get access to all the bonus features. But the film is completely free. You can watch it if you go on the Vimeo page. No one's done this yet, but if you actually go onto the Vimeo page or if you search Stuck Like Shark on Vimeo, you can download the film too. Yep. Uh, eventually, we're gonna hit the torrents because Nick's gonna put it up there. <laughs> Silence. So I guess maybe not. No, I was giving the thumbs up to the camera. Oh, okay. Well, I'm not watching the video because I don't watch this crappy show. You know, you even though you are, you actually have the bandwidth to do so I now. Have the capabilities <laughs> now, but the uh, the the the, uh, the lag just is uh, you know. Oh, between the the, the video and the audio. It just messes with me. Yeah. See, no. I, moving, I I can't do that. You know, I it's funny. I have myself in three different time periods here because I have. The what uh, my preview window, which is what the camera sees. Then I have the feed window, which is what's actually being sent out. And then I have a laptop open that has the actual what you guys are out there in, in the audience are seeing. So I see myself doing things three times, um, and it, it does get a little trippy sometimes, especially when I end up watching like uh, a clip or something on my laptop. Um, and I forget that it's playing, and I actually have to switch it over or something like that, which is why sometimes you see like a pause a couple minutes or a couple sec for a couple seconds because it's like, oh yeah, I forgot I have to actually end the clip. Um, yeah, that's funny. So uh, you can go over to stuckbychuck.com. You can give a little bit uh, cash to it if you want to help support Jerry and his uh, his. Uh, it, it literally, you know what the funny part is? I I feel like I like it's uh, I I'm um, I'm supporting like Jerry's kids. You know, doing this, like, I feel like I'm on a constant telethon for you. Well, kind of are. I know, right? That's, that's what it takes to be an indie filmmaker now. Constant, <laughs> uh, basically asking for help, but, uh, asking for support and, uh, getting the support from fans. Like, that, that's kind of what's running the indie film industry now. A lot of, uh, fan interaction and the fans supporting the artists so the artists can make and you know, I gotta wonder, like, what what is or, or what are audiences more satisfied with? A one to one connection where it's like, okay, I'm gonna hand you five dollars or ten dollars or whatever the amount of money it is, um, and I will either get to see the movie for that um, rather than having to go out to a theater to see it and kind of supporting some anonymous conglomerate. Um, you know, or support, like, even if you take it to, like, a larger level, like a Steven Spielberg or something like that, George Lucas or something, where you have a, um, you know, the ability to donate directly to Steven Spielberg and get the movie through him uh, versus going to see it in a theater or something like that. I'm wondering if, if that is a, a viable or more satisfying uh, ex experience versus, um, you know, just... Uh, going about business the old way. Well, it I don't would know. be cool if I paid money and Spielberg came to my house to watch a movie with me, if that's what you're saying, but no, I know that's not Well, based on his current out, current and recent output, it would probably be a really shitty movie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, okay, well, we're going to watch Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, and you'll be like, I'd like my money Jaws? back. Can we watch Jaws? <laughs> <laughs> you're like, but I really want to watch Duel. <laughs> <laughs> and then you watch and you watch him watching Duel, and he's just like tears rolling down his eyes. Just like I remember this. <laughs> it's funny. Michelle Simmons just put it up in the chat well a little a few minutes ago that um, she said uh, now there's a Kickstarter Indiegogo. Per okay, the chat just went down, so I got to go back up. Uh, let the high roller record an alternate commentary. That was one of the perks of Stuck Like Chuck too. Yep. Uh, no one did that perk. Nope. But that, the perk was that I would uh, call you up on Skype, we would watch the movie together, I would record a commentary with you, and you could choose to release it or keep it for yourself. Yep. And, uh, yeah, that was, so that was one of the things that we had. Uh, so it has been attempted before. <laughs> uh, but maybe with a, a filmmaker that's more engaging that people would, rather, would like to talk to and have a commentary with, it might work for them. I feel bad for Jerry. As much as I give him shit, I, I do find him to be um, relatively entertaining uh, most of the time. 60, 70 oh. percent of the time. Oh, thanks, Nick. Michelle yeah. actually just put, uh, I know, I didn't have the money at the time, Jerry. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I kind of figured that you were just posting that because you knew I did that. Because <laughs> um, she, she was been, always been a really big supporter of me, and I really appreciate it. So thank you, Michelle. And thank you to everyone else in the chat that's always been supportive of me. Uh, and I'll, I'll especially mention Nathan Cole because 
he's been bugging me like crazy, saying that he's my biggest fan. Jerry, Jerry's <laughs> having Jerry's having a moment right now. And actually, yeah. I don't think he's your biggest fan. His son is your biggest fan. No, that's Jake Stetler. You sure? Yeah, with the son Caden. You're right. Yeah. Either way. All right. So then both of them can have a have it out to find yeah. out who the biggest fan is. <laughs> They'll have to battle you. I apologize, Jerry, that <laughs> I don't keep it. Right away. I don't keep. Like, you have it. <laughs> I don't keep track of who your biggest fans are. I can. Yeah. I barely keep track of mine. Um, That's kind of arrogant of me. Oh yeah, I think he's your biggest fan. No, actually, my biggest fan is this person. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Uh, anyways, so, <laughs> um, anyway, so, uh, oh, one thing I, about why I'm releasing it for free, because it's four years old and why not? You've exhausted all your other options at this point. No one gives a shit about. No, I'm kidding. Well, I did actually have an offer to still. Uh, I still have a recent offer to to release it on DVD. I don't know now that I released it for free. It, it, that offer still stands. But I just didn't like what I've been what like had been offered to me, and basically it was like, you're probably never gonna make any money from this. We're gonna have it in these stores. If it doesn't sell well, they're gonna sell it back to to us, and then we're gonna, you're gonna have to pay for the cost of it, and we're gonna have to eat like the cost of advertising, and and it was like, and we're gonna sell them for like fifteen dollars, and if we reach this much, then you'll get like a dollar from what we sell. And I was just like, this is ridiculous. Basically, everyone's got all my fans. The few fans that I have will have to pay for the film. Uh, I probably won't see any of that money. The fact that the film's going to be out there in like only these select stores, and the fact that like Best Buy and Walmart, they're condensing their physical media aisles just because physical media is like dying out, and mm -hmm. there's, not, there's not room on store shelves for indies, so it's going to be all Hollywood stuff. So you're competing with that if you even get sh store shelf space. So uh, I was just like, I'd rather just put it out there for free. And if someone really likes it and they want to support what I'm doing and want to see me do something else, they'll throw a few bucks my way, and then I'll reward them by giving them access to more bonus features than we can even fit on a DVD or a Blu-ray anyway. So that, that was basically my entire idea behind why I'm releasing it for free. And uh, I don't know if it makes the best business sense, but at, at this point I think it's what's best for the film. And, and at the end of the day, uh, I would say that that's probably a better decision than um, anyone else could possibly give you on that one, myself included. And and I, I early on, was a bit hesitant about your decision doing that. And now, you know, I did take some time to think about it. I was like, you know, I'm not going to lie. It's probably not a bad idea, given the age of the flick. And, yeah, you, you're right. You have fielded some offers, and you're working on some other stuff. I think that even having that movie available, that people could actively see it as part of a, you know, if you want to call it a demo reel or whatnot, um, it can only work to your advantage at this point. You know what I mean? As long as people aren't hiring you for, to be, a, you know, some sort of a, a grip or a lighting tech or something we like that. We want you to do the lighting in our film. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that like someone watches it and it's just like, wow, I'd love for this guy to write a script for us, or you know, I, I'd love to see what this guy can do if I throw some money at him. So, and I don't mean that, and you know, will he go and strip if I throw money at him? <laughs> um, so, oh, and uh, I'm just as captivated by the Aquaman image as you are. I really am. Yeah. Well, between that and the chat room, which is we're we're all basically collectively saying that we're going to. Make sure that our project, a collective progeny, hates you um, in all shapes, sizes, and forms. I, I've I've gone on record in the chat room as saying that I've taught my sperm to hate you, collectively and individually, to the point where it could almost be considered a hate crime. All right, so all future. Uh Baisley's will be like, let's stay away from the Cavaleros. Absolutely, like I really want to get like a War of the Roses thing going on here, but uh, just way more nerdy. Like, like, instead of, like, guns and shit like that, I mean, it's literally just, like, forum fights. Yeah, we're, just like, <laughs> we're posting internet memes of each other. Exactly. <laughs> hey, first of all, you started it way back when with the Cartman thing, although I think that was more of a Jeff thing yeah, than like, you. I didn't do that. You no. laughed, though, and you were a party yeah, to I it before left, I was. I laughed at that, and then that led to an all-out hatred of me. You and everyone else <laughs> that laughed at that. But, um... Well, I still say that one of the best moments of our trip to Orlando, the Orlando Film Festival, was when we were shopping for discount Halloween candy in Target, and there was a bag of Baby Ruth's, and I tossed it to you. You gave me the saddest look in the world, 
And then you said, fine, but this is the only time I'll ever do it. And then you went, in your room. And I, was, I, I still, that, that was one of the highlights of that trip. Which is kind of sad. I, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, like, you, you knew exactly what, like, when I posted it to you, you knew that that's what it meant. <sighs> Jerry, I hate you so much. I know. Aquaman, you're the worst. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, should just, I should just, like, come up with an Aquaman voice for the, the show so we can start doing, like... I, I like how you were just kind of like, I know. Like, you really just, like, very almost... <laughs> Because you can, you re, you either play have to play it like really. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, <laughs> we're horrible fucking people. I would be more like Merman than Aquaman. <laughs> Aquaman would be more like Merman than Aquaman. I love fish. <laughs> like I love indie movies. <laughs> For all of you in the audience that are watching this that are totally disinterested. This is for us. This is okay. This has nothing to do with you. Uh, we would be doing this if you weren't watching. Uh, I, I do want to. I do want to go ahead um, get get the show a little bit back on track. One more thing that um, I want to say. I've got a couple things coming up. Um, uh, be on the lookout. Our August newsletter is going to be uh, hitting your your in email inbox soon. If you haven't signed up, there's actually a way to. Uh, you'll you'll notice there's some tabs down at the uh, kind of second half of the screen here. One of them says says subscribe. Um, you can actually get Film Snobbery in your mailbox there, so go ahead and you can plug in your uh, your email address there if you haven't already. Um, so we'll have some stuff there. We'll be uh, talking a little bit more about what I've got going on. Um, I want to give a shout out to the good folks at, over at uh, Focal Press um, and uh, specifically my buddy uh, Tyler Weaver of uh, Whiz Bam Pow fame. He uh, just actually got a, a book deal uh, with Focal Press, uh, writing about uh, comic books and, and uh, the, the medium of comics in uh, both uh, film, animation, and all that kind of stuff as well. So, um, real happy to hear that from him. I, him and I were actually supposed to take a trip uh, next week down to the Sidewalk Film Festival in Alabama, uh, but uh, because of this news and uh, some other stuff he's working on, he's not going to be able to go, so I'll be going solo. Uh, that also being said, if anyone out there is um, going to be in or around Birmingham, Alabama next week. I'll be at the Sidewalk Film Fest. I'll be doing a panel called uh, I Love You, But I Want to See Other Movies. Uh, very kind of similar to what I did at South by Southwest with I, uh, Your Baby is Ugly, a little bit um, you know, more of a, uh, less of a kind of a quote-unquote panel, more of like a workshop, really kind of just a discussion with filmmakers there about um, what they're uh, what they're doing with their films and, and how to evaluate them uh, a little more honestly than they have been in the past. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. And then um, I also want to keep you guys posted uh, in the very near future over at www.masteringfilm.com. I will be... Uh, I will be uh, uh, a contributing author, uh, writing some articles over there for, for them, and uh, I'm really excited about that because uh, that that is actually a subsidiary of uh, or owned by fo the folks at Focal Press, um, which we'll see where that relationship goes. Read between the lines. Uh, so I, I want to uh, thank everyone for, for coming to the show tonight. Um, we've got some great guests line up, uh, lined up over in the next uh, couple of months. Um, some of them haven't been announced yet. Some of them will be announcing very shortly. Uh, as we lead up closer to the First Glance Film Festival, we'll have a lot of those official selections on. We'll also be having, um, uh, let's see, in the, in the wings, I can announce a couple. Uh, I believe we just confirmed uh, Tiffany Schlain to come on uh, the show. I met her a couple years ago. Um, she's uh, the creator, actually, of the Webby Awards. But also she has a new movie that's coming out. Uh, it's going to be around in various uh, major cities um, uh, very shortly in the next couple of months. And uh, we also have uh, from the Venture Brothers, uh, Dr. Venture himself, James Urbaniak, is going to be coming on the show. Uh, we're nailing down a date with him, but he's uh, coming on at some point. And um, we also have, I'm, I've got some other traveling stuff I know I'm going to be doing in the near future. Obviously, October, I'll be at First Glance uh, Philly. And uh, I've got so much more stuff coming up. My brain is ready to just explode. Um, that's really all I got at this point. Uh, you can follow us over at twitter.com slash filmsnobbery. Follow Jerry over at uh, twitter.com slash getstuck. 
Uh, go watch Stuck Like Chuck over at uh, www.stucklikechuck.com. Uh, obviously, you can go to filmsnobbery.com every day, <laughs> every day for new reviews, interviews, stuff like that. Um, you can go catch us here at Film Snobbery Live every Thursday, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, 7 p.m. Uh, West Coast Time. And um, uh, oh, we also have uh, one big announcement. Um, for those of you guys who don't know out there, Chanel James uh, is actually joining the crew here at Film Snobbery as uh, actually our Director of Sales and Marketing. So, um, yay! Very happy to have her on. Uh, she's a, a film pr producer. She's also does all, uh, she's done a lot of other work in film. Um, she's on Twitter. Can't remember her exact Twitter handle at the moment, but she's going to be joining us in the next week or so. And uh, basically, what she'll be doing is she's going to be responsible for. Um, getting me booked at different places, uh, bringing in and, and uh, curating, I don't want to use the word curating, uh, maintaining and creating relationships with our existing sponsors and new sponsors, and uh, overall just kind of, ah, bugs, overall just being, uh, kind of easing the burden um, uh, from the, the marketing, the business side uh, for me so I can spend time kind of equally in different places and, and kind of bring us forward as a, both a company and as a, a platform for you guys so that we can do our job better. Um, mo I, mostly all of this stuff is happening because Jerry is useless to me. So there. <laughs> um, because I'm going to be so successful that you're going to have to start looking for someone to replace me. So you're just acting out your aggression against me. That's, that's what that is. Kind of like you're trying to run me off like Lassie. That's pretty much it. Actually, it's Old Yeller, right? Old um, Yeller. Not Lassie. Yeah, no. We didn't <laughs> shoot Lassie. Lassie, like, rescued Timmy from a well or some shit. Yeah. I don't know. Break that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I want to, again, uh, join us next week. Um, actually, wait a minute. No, you won't be joining us next week. Shit, I will be in Alabama next week. So no show next week. Um, that is, yes, no show next week. Well, that's good news. Jer Jerry, just so you know, there's no show next week. Okay. Uh, but um, that. depending on what the situation is down in Alabama, I'll do my best to get you guys some uh, great interviews, great footage, and we'll, uh, you know, uh, maybe I'll even see if uh, we can get a, you know, way to, to record our, my workshop over at, uh, at uh, the festival and, and get all that stuff uh, within maybe a week of returning, get it all posted up online for you guys to see, and we'll, uh, we'll go from there. So, I, I, again, I want to thank everyone for coming out tonight. I want to thank some people in particular, Gary King. I want to thank uh, Nathan uh, from you know, Waterholer. I want to thank... Um, I want to thank Bill, First Glance Film. I want to thank our guest, Joshua Legary. Uh, again, d check them out, uh, documentaryblog.com, uh, facebook.com slash raincitymovie is his new flick, and follow him on Twitter, uh, twitter.com slash IcarusArts. Uh, that is pretty much all we've got for this week, so I want to say thank you to everyone, and um, have a good week. Bye, everyone.